with another video. Have one card to show tonight. This is a pretty interesting card here. This is a T200 1913 Fatima team card of the New York Giants. The New York Giants um, put together three years of just great baseball. This was the third straight year that they won the National League pennant. They lost in the World Series in 1911 and 1913 to the Philadelphia Athletics. And in between that, they lost in the 1912 World Series to the Boston Red Sox. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that 1912 World Series in a little bit. But this team was led by manager John McGraw, who's pictured right here. He was one of the greatest managers of all time. He's in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, the Giants had a great pitching staff that year. They were led, they had three 20 game winners, and they were led by their ace, Christy Mathewson, who I think everybody has heard of. He won 25 games for them that year. And then to the left is Rube Marquardt, who was a 23 game winner, and someone that a lot of people may not have ever heard of was the other 20 game winner right here on the far side here, Jeff Tesro, who won 22 games. Tesro has kind of an interesting story. In his rookie season the previous year in 1912, he won 17 games and he had an ERA of 1.96, which led the National League in the first year that they ever officially kept that stat. He beat out his teammate, Christy Mathewson, who finished second. And in the American League, Walter Johnson was the ERA leader. Now, we're going to look at a couple of other interesting people here. Now, again, going back to the 1912 World Series, to the right of John McGraw, you have Fred Snodgrass. Snodgrass was a great, great baseball player. He was really, really good. And unfortunately, he is kind of known for one moment. Uh, a little bit like Bill Buckner, unfortunately, who's even though he was a great baseball player, is known for one unfortunate moment. But Snodgrass in the 1912 World Series, with the Giants leading 2-1 to one in the bottom of the 10th of the, of the deciding game in the 1912 World Series, Clyde Engel was the, a pinch hitter leading off the 10th inning and hit an easy pop fly into the outfield that Snodgrass ended up dropping. It ended up being a two-base error so you had Engel on second base with Hall of Fame, future Hall of Famer Harry Hooper coming up. Harry Hooper hit a screaming line drive into the outfield that Snodgrass actually made a great catch on. And it's kind of interesting because in a, in a not so cruel world, Snodgrass would have caught the first ball that Engel hit that he dropped. And Hooper would have just gotten a double on a play that he should have gotten a double on. And it would have been the exact same outcome, and he would not have been the goat of this game. Now, coming up next was Tris Speaker. And Tris Speaker hit a, a high foul ball down the first base line that probably should have been Snodgrass's play, but Christy Mathewson called for catcher Chief Myers to make the play. And Chief Myers ultimately could not get to the ball. And Speaker ended up getting another chance and ended up uh, singling in the tying run. And then um, in between that, you actually had uh, Steve Yerkes, who, who had walked. And Yerkes ended up scoring the game-winning run. So the 1912 Boston Red Sox ended up winning that World Series. And then also, a lot of people have heard of this guy on the far right, Fred Merkel, who has another unfortunate thing that happened when he was kind of known for not running out, uh, touching second base in, in an important game late in the season where ultimately the Giants ended up losing out to the Chicago Cubs that year. And... Um, so yeah, they, they you know, a great baseball team, but unfortunately they, they ran into some bad luck. Now, the other interesting person, the last person we'll talk about, and really the the main reason I ended up buying this card when I did, is over here on the far left, you have Jim Thorpe. 
This is actually uh, Jim Thorpe. This was his first year that he played baseball in 1913. It's his first appearance on a baseball card. Uh, he actually makes an appearance on a couple of other postcards that were produced in 1912 for the 1912 Olympics, but this is his first appearance on a baseball card. A lot of hype, you know, a lot of people thought he was going to be a good baseball player. He was a great all-around athlete, but unfortunately, he could not hit the breaking ball. And he ultimately did not have a very good baseball career, um, but just a great card. I, I love this this because it has Jim Thorpe on it, but also Rube Marquard, Christy Mathewson, just all the all the great characters of the game there. Anyway, that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, hope you find this card interesting. Hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next time.